Hello, hello. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Good. Oh, hi. Oh, these are all very okay. Okay. Here we. Okay. Hello. Good. Uh, hello, Maisha. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon, Manoj. Good afternoon. I mean, hey, Mark. Hi, Athea. Good afternoon, Wee Shi. Hi, Michaela. Good afternoon, Jay Lynn. Good afternoon. Uh, pardon me for a minute. I'm sorry. Hold on. Don't take it personal. Wait a second. That's out of rhythm. Oh, here we go. Oh, back to. Okay. Okay. I. When it comes to poetry, I am no leader. I can barely understand that iambic pentameter. Okay, hold on. We were back to. Um, Hi, Michaela. Good afternoon, Jay Lynn. Good afternoon, Alyssa. Hello, and good afternoon, Jessica. Good afternoon, Eric. Good afternoon, Zimin. Hello. Oh, here we go with the bones thing. I, at least now, thanks to Nick, at least I understand. All right, at least thanks to Nick, I understand the bones business, sort of, or better. I'm still going to end run my way around it, but yes, okay. I've had the pleasure of now being exposed. Yes, okay. So yes, happy Bones Day, Nick. Happy Bones Day, Athea. I'm so good after, I'm just gonna move on. Good afternoon, Ruby. Oh, here we go. It is a Bones Day, Maisha. Okay, yes, it is. Good afternoon, Catherine. Ha oh my God, yes. Okay, Maisha, right? Hi, everyone. Good. Whoa. Okay, Nick, that is interesting, the tattoo. I. I'm not sure I can address the tattoo thing. Although I have had one student who did do a physics test. Well, I'm not going to get into that right now. Get into a tattoo. That's gross. Okay. Hello. And you could tattoo the kinematics equations on the back of your eyelid so that every time you blink, you see them. That's gross. Okay. Oh, that's even grosser. Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to, yeah, my, whoa. Okay. My face is a tattoo. My face isn't even real. It's just a caricature of itself. Okay. Um, that, yeah, not that one. I agree with Nick. Okay. I'm going to move on. No, someone did actually in the class once put a tattoo of Galileo's original drawing of Jupiter's four moons, but that's a whole other, like nobody wants that. I mean, it was at least it was a simple design. But you know, wait a minute, do you guys, I shouldn't say this. Hold on, you guys have Professor, this is almost a serious question, but not really. You guys have Professor H. Walters for lab, correct? Or someone could put in the chat. I mean, you guys don't know Professor Wu yet, I don't think. Um, you'll have Professor Wu for lab quite possibly in 204, quite possibly next semester. And there's, but you did not hear from me that he was once upon a time a tattoo artist. Oh, you didn't hear that from me. And I totally deny that that's true, except that it totally is true. But I deny that I said it because I didn't say it yet, but it is totally true. Great. I mean, he, he really is. Anyway, okay. But he didn't do physics. Tat. That was before he was a physics person. So I don't think, yeah, I'm totally exposing. I'm sorry. Um, um, but that is really cool. No, he is. A, he is. Oh, you do? Wait, you do? Oh, my God. Wait, you do? Oh, then I totally should not have said that. Don't tell. But it's totally true. Yeah, he, you, that dude can, uh, he does a lot more than that doesn't meet the eye. Let me tell you. Um, um, okay, yeah, you do. I'm sorry. No, yeah. Uh, right. No, he is about as multifaceted. I can't even tell you where he's been in his life. I mean, I literally can't tell you. Uh, but no, he really was a tattoo artist at one point because he is fundamentally an artist. I mean, I can't even joke about one day if I have a moment, which is not now, and I guess now I'm exposing him to 10,000 people, thanks to you people. But but like one day I'll show you some, um, if I get uh, some, you know, like like images that I have on the phone or whatever of things that he's painted. Uh, one, and you know, don't tell him I told you this, but whatever, I mean, he, there was one thing he painted that won a contest in um, a long time ago in China that was up in the office of the president of John Jay for years, like not this president, but the former president of John Jay. When, um, it, it was like, it was in his office and there was like a gap. Okay, I can't even, the dude can paint. Let me just, that's all I got to say about that. Um, catch me, be, oh my God, being, okay. Whoa. Oh yeah, I guess you could, Maisha. That's right, you guys are kind of trained for that in a weird way. Yeah, um, okay, uh, 
there's something about this class. What is it about this class that like I always want to talk about everything but physics with you people? And that is a con all right. Um, 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 um. One important item. Oops, we actually do. We have one super important thing to address right here, and it's not. Well, hopefully you'll not consider it bad or anything like that. Um, but it is important. It's important enough that I'll even like. Yeah, I'll let somebody else in before I say it. Hold on a second. Uh, what is my favorite color? Oh my God. Um, I don't believe in colors. I believe that we are all one, um, but I like purple and green. Um, yeah, okay. But if you're asking what my favorite color is so that you can start preparing for my funeral, that's gonna take, um, wait, no, oh yeah, purple and green, of course. I mean, well, okay, okay, wait, I'm just gonna go on. Um, 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 um. I do. Okay, um, here's one thing before I forget, this is important. I'm not saying it's stressful. Hopefully it's not stressful, but it is important. Um, so hopefully I'll like get confirmation from you guys in the chat that you heard this. Okay, at one point I might have said, or perhaps I even did say that we were gonna have an exam this coming Wednesday. Now I might've said that, and you might've even marked your calendars if you were that type of person. But then you might have also noted that I had said that we would never just like have an exam without some preparation of various kinds. And we wouldn't just have an exam like out of nowhere that would just drop on your heads and just be an exam. Well, so because the second promise is true, because we don't just drop an exam on your head without some severe preparation. Um, if you ever heard me say that there was going to be an exam this Wednesday, I take that back. Okay, so let me be, and I'm not trying to be weird, but I do actually. So hopefully what I'm about to give you is hopefully good news. But for those of us who are very organized, I can't relate. But for those of us who are organized and like to mark our calendars and like to know what's going on, that I might be discombobulating some of you with this information. Let me be, I, let me stop joking, but it's very clear as possible. We are not having an exam this week. There's no exam this week. And if you're thinking like, well, I never thought there was one, what's even, then fine, fine. There never was, there never, there is not an exam this week. To be clear, in two weeks from this Wednesday, okay, this is now a thing that is November 10th, Wednesday, November 10th, I believe, Wednesday, November 10th, which is two Wednesdays from now, we will post an exam. Um, we will post an exam. I, that means for all the sections of physics. When I say post, that means after class is over, like maybe a little bit after class, possibly after your lab is over, an exam will be posted through Google Classroom. It will be due back via Google Classroom the following Monday before class. Like it's take home, you have like five days to do it. Um, there will be more details about that as we get closer, but I just wanna make a couple of things clear. Like it is take home, it is open universe. I'll as in you've heard of open book you've heard of open notes you've heard of open what this is open anything you want open the window and let the air come in it's open exam uh, that's not a joke this is not a joke i'll explain that more as we get closer however what's also true is that you will get a practice document in advance of that exam like about a week and this is one of the reasons we're not having it like right now because we need time for this to for the following to happen when we give exams in physics you get a practice exam like about a week in advance it is not turned into me it is not for a grade i mean the practice is not turned into me it is not for a grade it is so that you can see pretty much exactly what the exam will look like what do I mean by that? I mean, you'll get a document around a week in advance, around a week in advance, the document in format, in structure, in like rules and presentation, all that will look pretty much identical to your actual exam. So like, you'll know what your exam is gonna look like before you have it. Um, and the practice exam, for example, will have like an equation sheet at the front of it, which would be the same equation sheet that you would have in your actual exam. The practice exam will have approximately four large homework-esque type problems, like four problems, like where there's a fact pattern at the top, and then a bunch of like A, B, C, D, E questions about that fact pattern, like an involved homework question, which we're getting back into momentarily. Um, 
You'll do the same thing that you've been doing in homeworks. Like you'll draw a diagram, you'll present the facts, like then you'll start working, you know, each question with your step solution. Like, you know, you'll write down, you'll show all your work. In other words, you'll write down whatever equation or definition or general principle you think applies. You'll, you'll write down what you think the actual question is, what it means. You'll do the algebraic work you'll circle your final answer, like just like you do in homework, okay? The exam is like one big set of homework problems. It's around approximately four or so problems of which you'll have a choice. Like you'll do three out of four of the problems or, so, or you'll do like, you'll definitely have to do two and then you choose one of the remaining two, something like that. You'll, so you will not do all of the problems in the exam. You'll do most of them and you'll have a choice as to which to do. And that is for the obvious, for the reason that like some, some sections of this class like have gotten more involved emphasizing certain things and other sections will involve other things. So you'll pick the problems that seem most close to what you feel like you've really studied and prepared, okay? You, we are not gonna talk about this all this period. Part of the reason that it'll be in two weeks from now is that we have time to talk about it before it happens. You'll get this practice exam like about a week in advance or so. You'll have time to go home by yourself and or with friends and like try to work through the practice exam. You'll even be given some solutions or some answers to parts of the practice exam, not necessarily all, but some. You will definitely not only be allowed, but invited to come into class like the Monday of that week and the Wednesday of that week and ask questions about the practice exam and that I can answer so that you'll really know what to expect on the actual exam. That's how we review for an exam, how we review and how we study in physics is we like just work through a practice exam and we try to get to know the practice exam as well as possible. The actual exam will resemble the practice exam like almost 100% in format and presentation and structure. So there'll be the whole idea is that you won't have any surprises about that when you get to the actual exam. Content wise, like substance wise, like actual problem wise, your practice exam will be like 80%, 85, 75, 80, 85% identical to your actual exam. Our goal on the actual exam is for you to spend as little time as possible being surprised or being like, like, oh, this is on the exam. Like, it's not about trying to guess what's on the exam. You're going to know hopefully what's on the exam. Your goal is to like do it well. Let me say one more. Again, we're going to talk about it more plenty. Like as we get closer, I'll tell you exactly what materials on and all that. You'll most of your questions about it will be answered by the fact that you'll like have a practice exam that will answer those questions. Like if, if the actual exam, and all of this is just taken from the homeworks. It's not taken from a textbook. It's not taken from like PowerPoints that we never gave you. It's just taken from what we've talked about in class as per the homework. Honestly, honestly. Um, wait, there's one other thing. Like, how do you study for this exam? And again, we'll get, as we get closer, I'll tell you more. But the way to study for this exam is just to grind through the practice exam. The way to study is to know the practice exam inside and out. Know it by yourself, know it with your friends, know it with me. But the practice exam is not like one of many methods or like, it's not like the last thing you do after you've read through a whole bunch of books or memorized a whole bunch of, no, it's like the thing you do. Like literally the way to study is just use the practice exam. And the better you know the practice exam, the better you'll know the actual exam. Two more things about this. And, and I'm saying all this, it almost, all, look, I hate exams and I hate talking about them and I hate doing them and I hate grading them. Like seriously, like they stress me out. I don't know if any of you can relate. I tend to get a little overexcited whenever I'm introducing the first exam because you will see, I, a little part of me does get a little excited finding out that you are sharing with you the information that this is not like a lot of other exams that you're used to. I mean, everybody says that, I suppose. But like it, you, you are going to have like five days to do this thing and you are not going to do it under test conditions. I mean, you can if you want, but you're not going to be asked to do it under test conditions. You're certainly not going to be doing it with webcams or like anything like that. Um, you are going to be allowed and expected to consult your notes, to consult these videos that of these classes like we've done, to consult Khan Academy, uh, like shout out for that or whatever, or like Wikipedia, if that's how you roll or whatever, or more to the point, can you consult your friends? Like 
can 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 Nick consult Athea? Can everybody consult Maisha? However, the friendships work in this. Can yes, like that's a yes. Let me repeat. Can you consult your friends while you're taking this exam? Yes, you can. Can you even sit there and think that you're like actually taking the exam with your friend? Yes, you can. Is that considered cheating? No, it's not. Let me say that again. No, it's not. What's the deal? Like what? And and so you're gonna have five days to return a document to us that that will be like one big long homework. It's much more the feel of like doing a research paper, let's say, like a history paper, um, where like you, you'll be sitting on the question for a week before you even open it. And then once you open it, you're sitting on the questions for like a week. It's more like doing a take home research paper in a way than actually taking a traditional science exam. And I'm saying that with pride and like, I mean, I mean, the, uh, that is the case. If, uh, um, and some of you will be a little bit surprised by that. It will seem to some of you that what I'm saying right now is either a joke or like some weird gift or that I'm like the biggest sucker ever. If it seems like any of those, then you are hearing me. If it seems like I'm giving you a gift or that I'm the biggest sucker ever, then you are hearing me. Let me tell you, that's not actually the deal. Like I'm not actually, I am the biggest sucker ever in many ways, but this isn't one of them. Let me tell you that yeah, like most of the, I hate the stress of exams. And I also think physics is hard. I actually do think physics is hard or can be hard. My goal with these exams is to remove as many of the academic stress elements as possible, to remove as many of the things that make tests stressful as possible and leave just the substance of physics there for you to manage. I think when the substance of physics is properly managed, it is hard enough on its own. And I've said this before in other ways, like you're gonna see by the time we're done with this discussion or by the time we discuss it, this exam, it's still possible for people to do badly on. I'll be more, I'm not trying to scare you, but like, it's still gonna be a fair exam. Trust me, it is not actually a gift and it's not actually a joke, but it's not gonna be a trick either. And it's not gonna be a weird surprise and it's gonna be hard only to the extent that physics itself is hard. It's not supposed to be a psychological head game. That's what we're trying to remove from the physics exam. I'll be more specific. Like, and so again, I, if I'm not careful, I can over talk this because I know it's perhaps an unusual experience, but here's the real deal. I actually am against cheating. I actually don't like the concept of cheating. I actually don't like lying or I don't like people cheating themselves. I don't like people getting away with cheating other people. I don't like immorality any more than anybody else does. But of course, everybody thinks that they don't like immorality. The question is, like, what is immorality? What is morality? This is what I think about cheating. What I think is cheating is one person in a group somehow giving himself or herself an advantage or a luxury or a, a um, yeah, like a luxury or an advantage that somehow the rest of the group doesn't have. More to the point, I think it's cheating when one person somehow decides that they can look up things in Wikipedia while all the rest of the group is not looking up things in Wikipedia because they think they're not allowed and they've been told that they're not allowed and they're trying to do the right thing. So they do the hard thing. And then one person is like above the law or to the left of the law or whatever. And it's just like, well, even since everybody else is being righteous and following the rules, I'm going to like sneak in and break the rules and give myself like an advantage that they all don't have and that they don't have because they're trying to be good people at their own peril. And I'm just like, whatever. I'm just like, you know, an anarchic in the wild west or something. That's what I think is wrong. So my philosophy is why don't, but I also think it's wrong. I also think it's wrong for like to walk up to somebody on a diet and shove cake in their face. What, now, what's my point behind that? So I think that like for us all to be like in front of our computers at home in a COVID Zoom environment and then have someone say like on your honor system, don't use the World Wide Web while you do this exam or something like is I think it's just asking. I think it's just almost unfairly tempting to you. And it's also a complete like misunderstanding of the reality that we're in, blah, 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 blah. So what I think and frankly, I've been what I'm about to say, I've been doing since way before COVID anyway. What I think is, is as long as you're all allowed to fully cheat, then it's not cheating. 
If all of you know going into this exam that all of you actually can use all the resources available to try to get to understand the physics that we're asking you to understand, and even if you start understanding it in the middle of the exam with the help of your colleagues, like at that last minute, as long as you understand it, by the time you finish the exam, then we then quark bless America. So you're so here's the deal. It is going to be open. You and and I've done this. Believe me, I've done this actually for many, many, many years, way even before COVID. So it's not actually a crazy thing. But your exam will be take home, non test conditions, open universe. You do anything you want to do. You consult any friend of yours you want, including like your aunt, who's a Nobel Prize winning physicist. If you want, you consult any, and certainly including like like Khan Academy, whatever or certainly these videos, God forbid, um, but not Chegg, we draw the line at Chegg, we'll get to that later, but you consult that, I mean, you could even do that, but that will be at your peril, I assure you, but you consult any resource you want in order to get help, understanding the physics that we will be asking you to do on this exam, and then your job on the exam, once you sit down to fill it out, like on separate pieces of paper, the same way you do homework and blah, 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 your job is to put your name, on the piece of, you know, on the test, and then write out anything and only things that you understand. That doesn't mean that everything you write has to be original because what? Like it's physics, like what? I'm not expecting you to make up X equals one F AT squared plus V naught T or whatever. And I'm not expecting you to cite it. If you write down X equals one F AT squared plus V naught T, you don't have to give a citation that that came from like, like Khan Academy or Yaverbaum's YouTube video or Maisha or whatever. Like you don't have to cite where you got this information from, but what you just have to do is only write down information that you understand by the time you write it down. How do I know whether you understand it or not? The more steps you show, the more expansive your explanations are, the more you expand and thoroughly like actually perform the five step solution process, the more you actually take the time to do it in a way that is a little bit personal, a little bit like your words, a little bit like your fonts, your colors, your choice of how to do diagrams and stuff, then believe you me, in the same way that you will know every time you're writing something that you don't actually understand and you just sort of got from somewhere and you're just sort of hoping is right and hoping that I'll accept is right and hoping that I'm therefore going to accept as your understanding. Every time you write something down, you're kind of like, okay, this is a fudge factor right here. Like I don't get this thing, but someone said it was right. And I guess it's right. And I guess it's a physics exam. So I'm going to put something down. Every time like you do that, please know that I know that too. Like the one catch of the whole exam, and I don't mean this partially at all. I mean this as like, this is where it's actually really just all about true integrity, not BS integrity, is that as long as you only write down things that you understand by the time you write them down, and as, and as long as the more you understand it, the more you feel comfortable showing that you understand it, and the more you realize that someone who doesn't understand what they're writing can't really fake it, they can only sort of white knuckle it and pray that the faking works, the more you'll know that that's the catch of the whole exam is just that that's how I'm grading it, that I will grade it according, I will look not to see if you have right answers, because I don't need you to have right answers, because I already know the right answers, and I know that they're all over the web. What I need to see on the exam is that you understand why the right answers are the right answers and how they filtered through your brain in order to get on your paper. Most people still can do very well with that, but as long as you're not BSing. So the only standard of cheating here is don't cheat. Other than that, do whatever you want. Like do anything and everything that's ever considered cheating, as long as in the end, you're not actually cheating, if that makes any sense. That's the kind of exam it is um, I think, and that's the kind of exam the, the final exam will be, and that's the kind of exam both exams in physics 204 will be. Most people by the get to the end actually do, I think, appreciate this whole approach, da, da, da. And most people at the beginning, like also appreciate it because it's hopefully less stressful than many other ways of taking exam. Just know that like, like anything else, it is, it, it, uh, it still means you have to do the right thing and that like the wrong thing does leak through and is self-evident. Um, 
Right. Okay. So that's what's going to happen in two weeks. Let me repeat. Now I'm going to take a breath. We're going to get back to the material. What? Uh, uh, so what I'm saying is, in and maybe you want to mark the calendar. Or I'll ask for confirmation in the chat or something like that. What I'm saying is, November 10th, two weeks from this Wednesday, we'll post a midterm like that night. You'll you'll do the work and submit it before class time, like before 3.05 p.m. on Monday the um, 15th, I guess that is, Monday, yeah, November 15th. You'll do whatever you want to get to that point. You'll work with whomever, work however, but then by the time you fill out the document, you're gonna fill out a thorough document showing as much work as possible, going to town wherever you, you know, showing that you understand what you're writing um, and you'll put your name on it and you'll submit to Google and you will submit it on time. Like we will be serious, but we have to be serious about timing with exams. Um, and then it'll be graded you, and you'll understand that you will, you won't just lose points. To, you'll be able to gain points even when you have wrong answers, as long as you've shown all work authentically and correctly. Uh, but you'll also lose points when you haven't shown work authentically and correctly. So at the end, you want to like fill out your own document and do your own thing. So I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to look in the chat. I'm like, I'm like looking up into the ceiling. I'm going to look in the chat. What I'm looking, what I'm looking for first is just like in the chat. Can you just like confirm if you hear me and if you basically get, and please also again, hear me on this, like about a week before that, we will give you a practice exam. We'll start answering questions about the practice exam. You'll know what's going to be on the thing and we'll start addressing it particularly like a week before. I'm just not going to get all into the nitty gritty today, but that's the overall like expectation of the deal. So I'm gonna look in the chat. Okay, go, oh, thank you. Okay, whoa, wow, the chat is, okay. Was so, oh, cool, cool, cool. Wow, you guys are awesome. Wow, all right, I'm totally, can you take the exam? Oh, yeah, you know, that's actually almost a legitimate, wait, okay, I'm totally scrolling back. And it's almost a legitimate question out there. Well, all of Athia's questions are are at least legitimate, if not almost all, if not, oh, okay. That was one, no way, no way, no way. Okay, I hope you're all hydrated. <laughs> hope you're all hydrated for the exam or for now. Okay, open the window. Whoa, I totally don't get that. Oh, open the window. Yes, I do. Okay, okay, okay. Can we do it for extra credit? Wait, can you do what? For, well, wait, this, what I, I'm not sure if Ruby's question is a, what? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Good questions. These are good questions. All right, let me, let me do this. Slowly. First of all, as far as like Elizabeth or Lizzie's question of like, when is the, so I'm saying it'll be posted Wednesday evening, November 10th, the exact time. You might have to remind me when you have a lab exact timing to be announced, but Wednesday evening, certainly after class, like, like we, in other, why I cannot speak English. The evening of Wednesday, November 10th is when the exam will be posted. And although I haven't said the exact timing yet, let me make this clear. We will have had class before it's posted. Like you will have an opportunity to, you will have a last opportunity to ask questions or have me go over things or whatever that day you will certainly that day know what's on the exam because you will have been sitting on a practice exam for you know a few days at that point so so definitely like class time wednesday the 10th is on limits for you know addressing last minute things so hopefully that answers lizzie's question now ruby's question very fair can you do the practice for extra credit totally fair question i got to tell you that the honest answer is no and there's a really simple selfish reason why no because by the time you get to exams, it starts getting so crunchy with all the great, and I like I have to have all your homework like actually fully returned to you by then, all that. And I just know realistically that I I actually don't have time to look at your practice exam and get it back to you fast enough to help you for the exam. I like it's just a promise I know I would never fulfill. So you, I will say this to Lizzie's legitimate question and other people's: Are there will there be extra credit like on the exam or after the exam? Yes. Like often, like either there's an extra, either there's an extra credit problem on the exam itself, or often after you get them back, if the scores are concerning people or something like that, then often we'll, we'll right away, we'll do like a, let's everybody redo question three for extra credit or something. There are extra credit things that happen that get associated with it. But frankly, they're usually a little bit after, right before the timing and the grading is too crunchy, at least for me to handle. So, um, I don't want to mislead you with that, um, but it was a good question. I mean, fair question. Uh, yes. All right. Cool. Thank you. We see. Yes. November 10th is the day for the exam. Yes. It'll be posted November 10th. Thank you. 
let me say again. So, so thank you, Rachel, for, for, for confirming. Thank you, Ruby, for confirming. Thank you, Lizzie, for confirming. Thank you, Weishi, for explicitly confirming. Thank you, Jessica, for confirming. Thank you, Lizzie, and thank you for saying thanks. Thank you, Athea. Th oh, thank you, Melissa, my wife, for that. Thank you. And happy anniversary. Um, thank you, Nick, for that. Can you take the exam? I'm not even, have you, we met? Do you even want to take the exam? Do you see what a nightmare? Can you imagine actually doing work with me? It'd be a nightmare. Like you, it would, it would, I'd probably suck the phys physics knowledge out of you and then also like plummet both of our self esteem. But sure, we could try. Um, share your answers. No, I sort of do that to Athea and Nick's question, which I know they're kind of joking because they're always kind of hilarious. But there's like a serious element to what they're both saying too. Like, honestly, if we, if I ever get back to the material, we will share, a we will give you a practice exam, which we really hope that you guys work on together. And we will, even solutions that we don't explicitly share to that, even like some questions on it, we won't explicitly like hand out the answers. But if you have looked at it thoroughly enough before class time of that week, before the Monday or the Wednesday, and you walk into class and you're like, like I could not get part B of the practice exam problem four, right? Can you show I can you show us Yaverbaum? I will. That is part of how we review is we discuss the practice exam with you. And the more specific your questions are, the more people show that they've actually struggled with the practice exam and have gotten it down to like they don't understand this or that. I totally will show you things on the practice. Like, and I will what this is not supposed to be, what it's not supposed to be is like is like, guess what trick the professor is gonna pull on this exam. We are not trying to outsmart you or surprise you with like what's gonna be there for the most part, we're not. So I will try to share whatever I got with you before. Um, I will, I mean, I won't literally sit down at please. Um, we be, well, you, if I were to share with anybody, it would be people in this room, it would be, but um, wait. Oh, wait, good, good question. Oh, okay, cool, cool, thank you. Uh, one question in the direct chat was good. Like the way you're gonna do this exam, we'll, you know, we'll post an exam document that will have all the questions in it, but it's like a homework thing in that you're gonna do out the exam on blank white pieces of paper of your own, and then you're gonna scan those in and, um, yeah, you're gonna scan those in and make it into a PDF and turn that in at a la, like as though blue book, like you do this exam as though you were doing it on a blue book, only your blue book is just blank white pieces of paper at home. So it's, it is exactly like, it's anything we've ever practiced on the homework. Any time that you've ever done anything right on the homework or you've lost points or something like it, the whole point of the homeworks have been to practice this method of doing the exam. Like you do it literally, truly, you just, you do the stuff separately on white piece of paper and you do, like, and this is sort of why we've been practicing on the white pieces of paper, you'll show like, okay, question one, the car drives down street. Here is diagram part a, what is the car's velocity? Like you'll literally write out like that. Like you won't cut and paste my exact words. You'll show in your words that you get what the question is. And then you'll go through the process of answering the question and, and you, right. Okay. So right. You do it on separate. Um, and you show all your work. It's not like, it's not like Scantron. It's not like you give us the answers boxed and then on some separate things, show me like your scrap work to prove that your answers are your own. It's not that. It's that you're giving me all your work in like an organized way. Like your work is not scrap work. It's not like some side, like proof that I didn't cheat. Your work is the work. It's like, it's what we're actually grading. It's what I actually want to see as a full, right? So you could think of it as each, and, and there's more and more as we get to physics 204, you'll see what we're really trying to get everybody to see with all of this is that every physics problem really is a mini proof, really. Every little physics problem, even if it's a simple one, like car goes uphill at 40 miles an hour, comes downhill at 60 miles an hour, what is the average speed for the whole round trip? And they're like, the way that you do like step one, like, okay, average speed equals by definition distance over time. Step two, the distance over here is unknown. So we call it X, blah, blah, blah. Step three, like what you're really doing when you solve a physics problem is you're actually providing a little proof of how problems of that nature would be solved for all time 
regardless of the particular numbers, if you see what I mean. Like you sort of know that you're really doing a physics problem, right? If you, once you're done with it, if you step back and look at it, and if you could change all the numbers, if you could change all the numbers and still have a solution that works or even better, erase all the numbers and put in things like X or Y or D. Like if you step back and realize like, oh yeah, what I've just done is like how this thing, this is a method for solving a problem like this for all time. Like I could even publish an article in a magazine saying like how to solve round trip velocity problems. First do this, then do this, then do this. So it's kind of like an experiment. Like if a car were to do blah, 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 then we could predict its speed by doing blah, blah, blah. Like every little problem we do, even if it's just a contrived exercise with contrived numbers, really is like a little mini proof. And what we're doing, and you'll see that even more in physics 204, where kind of the numbers really do disappear, honestly. So every little problem you're doing, you're sort of proving two things. You're proving how a solution as opposed to just an answer, how a solution can be derived for a problem of that sort. You're proving like how the solution can be derived, why the solution actually makes sense and works for a problem of that sort. And you're proving that you actually get it, meaning that it makes sense to you, i.e. you'll really know you've done it right if there's almost no step in anything you do that just was raw memorization. If every little step actually like logically followed from the one before it, and you can show that, like the more you break it down and show tiny, tiny steps, the more you're really showing that you really get it, which means not that you did your work, not just like you're not a cheating person, but that you're like, oh yeah, this crap actually makes sense. Like it actually, like I could have even made this up on my own if I had nothing else to do with my life. Like I actually could see how this is the way to do this, not just because someone told me, but because once they told me and I thought about it for long enough, I was like, oh yeah, that is the way to figure this stuff out. Like that's the goal of all this. So, and really you'll know it and you already know it. You all know it. You know the difference when you sit down to do some of this stuff, like you know the difference between when you're following me and when you're just like, want, want, like, okay, whatever. He's saying it because he's wearing a jacket. So blah, blah. Like, you know, the difference between comprehending and accepting. We're asking you on the exam to show your comprehension, not your acceptance. That That's the bottom. And it's not hard. It just means like, you know, you just have to like actually work with each other and get there. I'm um, sorry. I'm going to, so I don't know if that answers the question. All right. I, I one more funny thing. To, well, I don't know if it's funny. One more thing to say, but um, it, it makes my life harder on the grading level. Like I actually have to grade with some degree of you know, like uh, attention, but, but that's where you also, I mean, just remember the catch is in the grading, not in the enforcement of rules, but okay, okay. All right, we got it. Good. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Jay Lynn. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Rachel. Awesome. Thank you, Wishi. Oh, I like this. Oh, thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, Alona. Great, great. Thank you, Ruby. Fair enough. To thank you. <laughs> you're welcome for the you're welcome. Okay, got it. Thank you, Eric. That huh. I don't know if it'll be worse than it is now. I think I understand what Nick is saying, but yeah, wait, oh. Yeah, that's a very, oh damn, I knew it. It's always the person who, yes, Athea is totally right to ask that. That was like, oh, that to put me in my place or question. Yes, they will. That's another reason we postponed the test to tell you the truth. Cause I know I'm behind totally, oh. So I, I personally apologize to Athea and everybody in the room that yeah, I owe you a serious amount of homeworks. I don't know why it happened so much in this particular class. It's actually kind of, really unfortunate that happened but yes and they will you will have them back before you take the exam so that you can actually know what like you need to do that is totally fair and totally right i can't even make a joke okay yeah no thank you and thank you for that's a very thank you for being polite about that because you could really take me down for that one um you're absolutely right um and so thank you althea and thank you rachel and that's closing the conversation points too um so yes um one other thing and i think the next thing is I mean, the real thing about our exam, yeah, I mean, like the one thing about our exam this uh, way is you'll know in your heart at every moment whether you're actually cheating or not. Like more so, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that, but this is not a competition between you and me. Um, 
but it might be a competition between your inner devil and your inner angel like that i don't know it depends how you're used to doing work in school um uh wait wait, wait. never blaspheme <laughs> well you can all right uh blaspheme i love that word okay well um uh now two more quick things on this um and again it's designed just remember this too please like some people will cripple under the press. Some people will have a hard time with this because some people are used to getting through science classes in college. Um, let me not put it that way. Some, <laughs> let me not put it that way either. There's a way in which sometimes science is taught and I'm sure I've been guilty of teaching it this way too. I'm sure I, in some ways I'm guilty of it right now. There's a way in which sometimes science can be taught that encourages us all to know things rather than to think things through and to think that uh, um, that rightness is more important than goodness or something like that. There's a way in which sometimes we put you all in a position where you're so concerned with outcomes and results that we sort of send a message that whatever you can do to get to those outcomes and results is the most important thing in science. There's also a way in which our culture tends to make us all believe that what science is, is a bunch of science results, whatever the CDC is saying at any given moment or something. I have to say that I do not actually believe that that's what we're supposed to be doing. I believe that we're supposed to be viewing science as a method of critical thinking and unbiased research and a method of, of, of like intellectual integrity. So I believe that um, my notion of what constitutes cheating and what doesn't is different from at least many of the messages that I've gotten as a science student or from some of my colleagues at some of our weaker moments. Therefore, for some of you, this, science, this exam will be weird um, because I'm really gonna ask, I'm gonna say like, I've got all, you've got all the answers right in front of you. Now, actually, your test is, can you show me that you understand those answers? Not, can you just write them down? For some of you, you may be like, wait, what? I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Like the answers are right here. Like, dude, what do you even want from me? Like, I can just copy them down and here they are. But like, somehow you seem to be saying, don't do that. Right, for some of you, it might be a little tricky the first way around. My first advice, if there's any confusion is don't use Chegg. That's my first advice. If you're using Chegg, you're misunderstanding how this test is supposed to work. That's one thing. And I say that with all due disrespect to Chegg. And I'm not saying that in front of 10,000 people, but really some of my best friends are not Chegg. Um, uh, uh, and I know full, I mean, if you type my name into Google images, you'll get like 85 million Chegg things of 85 million past assignments that I've written or exams. Okay, and I'm not saying they're not there. I'm not saying it's not gonna work. I'm not saying you're not gonna get something from Chegg, but I'm saying this with all, dis with all due disrespect to Chegg and, and, and his or her employees, like, I'm sorry, but what they do on my tests is not what I'm looking for. Like they do not get good grades on my tests. I don't know what that says, but I'm just saying it. That's number one. Number two, quick story, and this is not to scare anybody. This is to enliven us all. I think this group in particular, I think you guys, frankly, I think you guys ooze integrity. You in particular, the group I'm talking about right now, you and 10,000, 11,000 of your best friends. I think you guys ooze integrity. One reason I know you have integrity is because you're totally willing to tell me when you think I don't, like in direct chat and in public chat. Like, I think you are very honest. You honestly make it clear when you're not happy about things. I think you are, and I think you're hilarious. I actually have a secret bias that it's just impossible to be as funny as some of you are without actually being deeply moral in some way. You just cannot see the absurdity of life unless somehow you are aligned on the correct side of it. That's my bias. But I, I do not actually worry about the integrity of anybody in this room, and I mean that, or 11,000 of your friends. Um, but I will nonetheless tell you, so this should, this should be a good thing. Um, and the fact that you responded as well as you did to early things early in this course, which is what's making this class so much fun for me, really does tell me. I think some of you have been thirsting for more integrity in your science life, really. Um, and I mean that very directly. Um, I'll tell you a funny story, quick thing. Years and years and years, there's a true story. True story I might tell, I'm off the topic, maybe kind of, but like not really. And it's, again, this is meant to inspire you. It is not meant to intimidate anybody, seriously. But it is years and years and years ago, before. COVID, remember like 
Go into your mental time machines. Go back, way back, way back to before COVID, when we used to like go into buildings to take tests and things like that. Um, so one summer in Physics 204, this happened to be in Physics 204. It was like near 2000, I don't know, like 2016 or something. Um, we had a final exam in Physics 204. That was, it was one of the early years I did this, totally take home exam. And I said, take home mean open universe, like do anything, do whatever, and you can work together on this exam. Now they didn't know how much I really meant that. They didn't know what I'm telling you guys, which is that secretly, I wish you all could work together more. Again, I think in this group, there's a lot of working together that, I mean, certainly you guys work together on things that aren't even physics, that's evident. And I think it's great. Secretly, I think that even without COVID, you guys were at a disadvantage at John Jay. You didn't get to work together to get through physics as much as I did in my college because I got to sleep at my college and most of you don't get to sleep at John Jay. I could never have gotten through a physics major. I could not have gotten through a physics major in undergrad or grad if I had not been constantly trying to get through it with other people. And I mean that dead serious. I don't know how anybody does stuff as hard as physics or math or whatever in total isolation. I don't know how they bear life and I don't know how they figure things out without bouncing them off other people. So I believe strongly in scientific collaboration and student collaboration. I think it's already hard enough to work with one another even on a good day at John Jay without COVID. Now, and I know a lot, many of you are in the building. I understand many of you are wearing masks right now, you know, Cork Bless America, but I think it's still very hard. I mean, it's just very hard to work together the, the way that some of this stuff requires. So we believe in working together so strongly that as you know, you have to share a grade in lab work. That sucks, I know. Um, but we believe in it so strongly that even years ago for the final exam in Physics 204, I said, okay, everybody, take home, take everything. You can work with one another. You can help each other, blah, blah, blah. Now they all thought that I didn't really, they all thought, oh, he doesn't even know what he's saying. Like he is such a sucker. We're totally going to jank this thing around. We are all going to, unbeknownst to Yagerbaum, we're all going to get together like on a Sunday and we're all going to like go to someone's house or whatever, or to some bar or something. I don't know where they went. And we're all going to like literally trade this around. Like we're going to say, you do number one, I'll do number three. We're going to pass it all around. We are all going to do this shit as a group and knock this out as a group. And boy, is he going to be sorry that he gave us that opportunity because he said it was allowed. He can't punish us. Okay. So they, and I know this, I, I didn't know this at the time they were doing that. But after the fact, I found out that they literally all got together to do the exam together. Now, A, they didn't understand that that's like my secret fantasy come true. I mean, really, like I'll do anything to think of you guys talking about physics voluntarily when I'm not there. That is a dream come true. That's actually what I feel like is my goal in all this is to get people to be talking about physics amongst themselves when I'm not there. Terrific. They did that. Okay. They all got together. They all did the exam like literally together. Now what they, then they, they made two slight mistakes in doing this though. One, they ended up not then going back into their separate corners after they got and shared all the knowledge, which I think you should do, after they shared all the understanding and the learning together, then they kind of then all wrote exactly the same thing on their test. That wasn't wise. They should have shared everything, gotten everybody all smarter, gotten everybody to understand it, and then given themselves an hour or something to go in their separate corners and actually write it out in each their individual ways. They didn't really do that. Still wasn't going to punish them for cheating, but it wasn't a smart thing to do. The other not smart thing that they, the other thing they did that wasn't as smart is they all got together. I keep saying they all got together. That's an exaggeration. They didn't all get together. They all got together minus one. They literally, literally, and again, I didn't know this at the time. I found out way later. They all got together, but they didn't invite one person who maybe they didn't have that person's like contact info or something, something. That person, I know that they didn't invite. It happened at the time, was sort of new to this country his or her English wasn't quite as smooth and fast or as unbroken as theirs. He wasn't as social or in the mix as the rest of them. For whatever reason, he didn't get invited, or she, but it was a he, um, didn't get invited or didn't get the invitation or what, what. There was one person who was not included in all of this. They did the whole thing. That person did it on his or her, but it was him on his own. They did the whole thing. They all turned it in. Again, I didn't know this was happening when it was happening. I was just like hoping people got together. But I got the exams and all the exams except for one 
all of them were pretty much identical. That's okay. I said that could happen as long as like it was honest, right? But the thing is, because they didn't go into their separate corners and because they just like morphed it as one document, it wasn't actually that great. Like, like the, the knowledge, like the chain, like sunk to the weak, weakest link, if you know what I mean, instead of going to the strongest, because it was a little bit of mob rule and whatever, whatever, they didn't cheat. They didn't do anything immoral, but they didn't actually like play to all their strengths. They kind of played to their mob common element. So the one exam that was repeated by like all of them, and I'm slightly exaggerating, but not that much. The one thing that was over and over coming in from all of them wasn't all right. It wasn't, and this is the problem with Chegg as well. It wasn't that terrific. It was okay, but it ended up being like a 78. And so pretty much everybody in the class got a 78, not for cheating, but just for like not doing that well. The one person who wasn't invited and who worked it all on his or her, but definitely his own, sorry, got a 95. Now, why do I tell that story? Like, am I trying to say, so therefore, da, 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 da? no, I'm not trying to say that. Well, I don't even know what that would mean to say that. What it is good for him, but he, okay, well, oh, yes. And I do, uh, wait, well, between the, okay, okay. But here's the thing. Oh my God. Yeah, you're like, okay, that's hilarious. I'm looking at the chat. Here's the punchline, though. I mean, everything I'm saying is true. Okay, and you can verify the story. They all got like a 78. And again, I just want to emphasize, I didn't punitively give them a 78 because they cheated. I like graded their thing and it just wasn't that. And I didn't know what was happening until it was all over. But they all got a 78. This one kid, this one guy, this one person who wasn't as socially slick or wasn't in the mix. And by the way, I also did like this group. Not as much as I like you. I can say that. Not as much as I like you. But I did like them. But they didn't invite this one guy. And this one guy got a 95. And you want to know what the punchline of the story is? If you haven't already guessed, maybe you've already guessed. You know, and remember, I was a professor. So this isn't one of those, and that person, that person was me. No, but close. The person who got a 95 is now named Professor Wu. That was totally Wu was the student in that class that that had. Ah, yes. And that's the punchline. That, and that totally happened. You can, you, I mean, and also he was a tattoo artist, just so you know. But yeah. Like, and that's how he got his job. Like, not literally. Wait, I missed the punchline. Can you say it again? Okay, you know Professor Wu? You know Professor Wu, your lab professor? I think he's- Oh, lab. yeah. That was him. He was the student in that class that nobody in the- oh. And he got a 95. And then he got a job. And they didn't. I mean, not, I don't mean to put it quite like that. And it didn't work quite like that. But like- yeah, he is a man. Do not underestimate that dude. I mean, I'm and look, I know sometimes, right, even now his English maybe is not all like bubbly or whatever. And also it's on Zoom, like, and it's like in the middle of the night for him because he's in China. Like, but I just want you, that guy goes deep. Let me tell you, he goes deep. He was the one that, and later on, he did become very social and people did invite him to things and stuff like that. But at that time, when he was young, he was the guy that wasn't invited and then just quietly got a 95 while everybody else invited everybody else and quietly or loudly got a 78. Um, <laughs> okay, wait, I'm just looking. I can't. <laughs> oh, woo too. All right, I knew I took a risk telling that that's a Yeah, you would. Uh, yeah, I mean, he may kill me for telling you that part. Seriously, no, but he does. I mean, I, I, he might, and he could kill me. I mean, I mean, I hope he wouldn't. But uh, uh, no, he's super cool. I mean, really. Um, he, I'm. What he thinks, I mean, like, he. <laughs> we used to take very long car rides together and stuff when he wasn't in China and when we weren't having COVID, and I'm telling you. What that man does to me, in it, the, what he says and thinks in English is per, like occasionally, and this is a thing we should all be sensitive to in life. I don't know why I'm spending this whole class talking about what's because it's you guys. But like, seriously, when anybody ever hears someone else speak English in a way that maybe isn't like, you know, all flowing and blah, 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 blah. It's so easy to think like, oh, I guess they don't get what's going on as much as I do because their English isn't quite mine. But think about this. Everything he says and everything he gets, and, and to my mind, like once you get him talking and stuff, he runs, he runs circles around me and he is running circles around me in a language that is not his first. Like he can outthink me in what is my way of thinking. 
but he's translating everything like the way he actually thinks in his native language. I don't even want to like, I think, I, I mean, I, it's a weapon. I mean, it's like seriously intimidating how deep his thoughts go. Like if they go that deep, you know, like I can't, am- oh, you get my, my point, you get my point. But my real point is be careful with the test. Like do work together, please. Benefit from each other, please. Help each other, please. And I mean, in the middle of the freaking thing, it's fine. While you're doing it, call up your friend and be like, dude, what are you doing on part B? That is not cheating. That is called research. That is called collaboration. That is called like making life livable, blah, blah, blah. But then after your friend says like, oh, on part B, I totally like use the velocity thing and I went blah, 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 blah. But then don't be like, oh, okay, got it. Be like, but wait, that doesn't make sense to me. Hold on. How do you even, I don't even get that thing that you did and blah, 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 blah. And then when your friend goes, well, I blah, 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 blah. Then go, oh, and then hang up the phone and then write it your way. Don't just like put it into a dictaphone and then, you know, transcribe text to voice on, or voice to text onto the paper. You follow what I'm saying, right? That was the mistake that that group made is they just glommed into each other's papers. Don't do that. Glom into each other's minds and then separate and put your minds on paper. And that's called actual learning. All right. Anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> I want to, okay, cool. <laughs> no, I meant glom, I think, but okay, okay. So now, of course, I we only have 20 minutes. So what? here's what's gonna happen. Um, um, I want to, oh yeah, I should have done this a long time ago. Okay, glom as a verb. Okay, God, I, it's really dangerous how much I like this class too. And if you think that you can just like, oh yeah, you can, that's right, all right, forget it. Um, okay, but I don't wanna deprive you, see? it's a, I like you so much but I also love you. So I want you not to just have, a, I need you to actually get educated. So I wanna not just give you what you want. I wanna give you what you need. And that's the whole tricky balance. Okay. So, um, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. So the top equation, well here, all right, let's just do, we're gonna do, okay, we have 20 minutes. Uh, no, we have, yeah, in 20 minutes, right? Let's do a quick practice. We're going to do a quick, oh. Well, this is what we have so far. I don't know if you want to write this down. This, right, these are the equations we have so far as of last week, as of the last, class, right? We're starting to build more and more equations here. And by the way, again, you're going to be given these equations in the exam. So it's not a matter of memorizing them. It's really a matter of understanding why they make sense and how to use them and when and so forth. Okay, but these are the equations we have so far. We have two, then we say, if and only if, acceleration is a constant, then these next two equations follow, right? The last one, and I'm gonna give you one more today. The goal before today is over, even with all the yammering, the goal is to give you one final kinematics constant acceleration equation, one final one, a fifth one. And then we move on to other topics, okay? But, um, and it was still more homework to talk about, stuff like that. But this last equation at the bottom of the sheet is the very, or the bottom of the board, is the very last one that we sort of established in the end of the last class. It is a shortcut, okay? It's not meant, to, it's not meant to be more knowledge and it's not meant to be a magic formula that just got pulled out of anywhere. What it really is, is an algebraic combination of the top three that is technically, you never actually need the bottom equation, even though, every, I mean, if you've ever taken high school physics or something, you probably recognize it because it does come up a lot. People plug and chug into it a, or chug into it a lot. Once you get used to it, it certainly addresses a lot of basic physics problems, but I don't want you just, but it's not just a magic formula that you just accept on faith or something and you just plug and chug blindly into. I want you to see that first of all, it actually makes sense. It is just a shortcut for the concepts embedded in the top three equations. Like we never, we're only using it because we want to save time. If we were willing to just use the three equations in succession every time for a problem, we never would need that bottom one, okay? That's number one. Number two, notice that that bottom equation has the letter A in it. I mean, it says X minus X naught equals one half AT squared plus V naught T. That assumes that there is an A to plug in. It assumes that there's a value of A acceleration that's not changing that we can plug in. Um, and that's the case. And, and that's also going to be the case for the last equation I'm going to give you today. In other words, the last three equations that we have out of five, all three of them assume this condition of constant acceleration of a change that's not 
changing, okay? Um, um, that's why the first two are triple equal signs. They're always true no matter what. You can't go wrong with those first two. But then the next three, you gotta be careful, only use if you know for a fact that we've got a rate of acceleration that is not changing. I'm gonna give you a quick example. Um, um, so quick example of how to use this last equation. I mean, we got to it last time, but just sort of quick review or practice right now. You might wanna try either in your head or on a piece of paper or whatever. And I think, yeah, I think John Ford sort of helped us see this last time. Like, here's the quick example, just again, practice. Um, um, you got, a, so this is an example of how equation number four works. We got a car accelerating at a constant rate, uh, at a constant rate of A, like A equals A naught. It's a constant rate of A equal 30 miles per hour squared. And if this car is doing so from rest, and it does it for three hours. Oh, I put the answer in there, but didn't mean to do that. Sorry, well, sorry, I didn't mean to put the answer in the bottom. Well, probably too. But you may want to take a second to practice either, practice plugging into the equation or even perhaps better, practice, see if you can get the answer to this any way other than the equation. Like what you should see is that the equation will give you an answer that actually makes sense, even if you don't have that equation. Um, because I am starting to get limited on time because the answer was accidentally there already. Let me tell you what I mean. Like, like what I really want you to see the whole purpose of this last equation, what you really want to see in physics is that acceleration is very related to velocity, but they are not the same thing. Really, in some ways, the whole point of physics is that speed or velocity is relative Velocity is just in the eye of the beholder. Velocity is just a relationship between two objects. Nothing has objective velocity. Acceleration is yet something else. They sound like they're related. They're both rates. I mean, they are related. They sound, but they're not the same thing. Put another way, whenever you say like distance equals rate times time, if you ever do that in your mind or you try to figure it, you got to be really careful and realize that when we say distance equals rate times time, what we really only mean is distance equals average rate of speed times time. Or if we like displacement equals average rate of velocity times time. That's what distance equals rate times time is. Any other kind of rate that we might be dealing with such as acceleration requires a more exotic relationship or more exotic equation to cut to the chase, to try to cut to the chase. Look at this example that's right here. Now, granted, I know the answer was written on the bottom page a second ago, but either ignore that or erase it or whatever. Just really look at this question. It's like a little practice thing. Please under, so you got a car that's starting from rest, starting from rest, right, car. And it's like, well, it's traveling. It starts from rest, but then it speeds up at a constant rate of 30, of 30 miles per hour squared. And we want to know, in three hours, how far does it get? Right now, I, I know we did almost exactly this last time, but I'm trying to review, like this is where the rubber hits the road in a way for physics. Again, for some of you, maybe this is so simple that it's like annoying and I apologize for some of you, but for others of you, I wanna say like, this, if we can get this straight, then th the rest of physics, even when it looks really complicated is in a way like never harder than this. This deal right here is if you've got a car going at 30 miles per hour squared of acceleration, for three hours, the thing to understand is it does not travel 90 miles. I mean, if nothing else, that's the, that is the main thing I'm saying right here is a car that accelerates at a constant rate of 30 miles per hour squared and does so for three hours does not travel 90 miles. In other words, don't just think, oh, distance equals rate times time. Rate is 30, time is three, multiply and we get 90. Like that would not be the answer to this question. What, okay, the way to get the answer to this question is you could plug and chug into that fourth equation that I just gave you on the other sheet. This would be an example. That fourth equation is like the distance equals rate times time equivalence once we're dealing with a rate of acceleration. The equation looks very exotic. It's one half a t squared plus v naught t. But what it's really saying is something logical. I'm just looking at the time to make sure. What that last equation is really saying, it's saying, if you plug in, if you plug in three for T, like three hours for T, and you square it, you get nine. 
And then you multiply that. So like, you know, if you're looking at your piece of paper and then you multiply that by one half of A. So in this case, A is 30, right? So you multiply um, um, nine by 15. And then you add to that zero times three, zero being the initial velocity, V naught is zero because it starts from rest. Okay, so if you multiply three, if you square three, get nine, multiply that by 15, you will get 135, which is the correct answer here, okay? This car will go 135 miles. It won't go 90 miles. It won't go 30 miles. It'll go 135 miles. Now, that is what the equation says. But what I'm here to tell you is why that actually makes sense. Why, yes, you can use that equation once you get used to it, but don't use it blindly. The equation actually makes sense. What it's really saying logically is that that first step that you do and in your head where you wanna go, well, okay, it's going for three hours. It's going at a rate of 30. So I, I don't know, I think I'll multiply 30 by three. I'm here to tell you that's not wrong. That's just the first step. It's not the answer. This is why we show all of our work on the exam and stuff. If you multiply 30 times three and you look at the units, you're multiplying 30 meters, I'm sorry, 30 miles per hour squared times three hours. So, you'll, and again, I know I'm talking out here, you might wanna be writing this down while I'm talking, but like, so one of the hours will cancel, but not the other, and you'll get 90 miles per hour, right? If you multiply three hours by 30 miles per hour squared, you don't get 90 miles, you get 90 miles per hour. What is that? What that is, is the final velocity that this thing achieves by the end of the three hours. Like it's speeding up, starting at zero. It's speeding up, it's speeding up, it's speeding up. It's going faster and faster and faster. It's gaining according to the rule, according to the A, it's gaining 30 miles per hour of velocity every hour. So, it, and it's doing that apparently for three hours. So at the end of the first hour, it's going 30. At the end of the next hour, it's going 60 miles per hour. At the end of the third hour, it's going 90 miles per hour. That's its instantaneous velocity at the conclusion of the three hours. That's like it's fine. That is its final velocity for those three hours. Okay. And I'm not saying that just file forever. It's never going to do anything more. No, like presumably if it keeps accelerating like this, it'll then go 120 and then 150 and then 180 miles per hour. But we're paying attention for three hours just because that's what the problem says. Like in three hours, how far does it get? So at the conclusion of those three hours, when we turn off our stopwatch at that moment, the car is now driving at 90 miles per hour. That's its instantaneous final velocity right at that moment, ninth, right? So if you multiply three times not, uh, if you multiply three times 30 and you get 90, you're not wrong. I'm not telling you that that's, I'm just saying that's the beginning of your work. You multiply 30 times three, you get 90 miles per hour. That's how fast it's going at the end of three hours. Then you say to yourself, well, okay, okay, distance equals rate. If I, if I wanna know how far it's going in three hours, I just need to know how fast it's going in three hours. And now you might even say to yourself, well, now I know how fast it's going 90. So shouldn't I take 90 miles an hour and multiply by three hours and get like 270 miles? Is that logical? And that's almost logical. And you're, and if you're following me at all, you're almost there, almost. But you gotta realize, no, it's you, the concept is right. You multiply average velocity by time in order to get displacement. That concept is right. But think about it, the car wasn't on average going 90 miles an hour. It only reached 90 miles an hour at that very last moment. For every single moment prior to that, it was going slower than 90 miles an hour, right? 90 would not be a fair number to multiply by three to see how far it went because it was never going 90 until the last minute. You might as well multiply by zero because it was going zero at the very first moment but only for that first moment. So it's not really fair to multiply zero by three, and it's not really fair to multiply 90 by three, but it is fair to take the average of those two numbers. The average, the middle of those two numbers, zero plus 90 divided by two, 45, is the average velocity for this car, assuming it was accelerating constantly the whole way. 40, this is the third equation, in other words, V bar equals V naught plus V over two. The average velocity for this thing for three hours was 45 miles per hour. So this thing is equivalent to a car going on average 45 miles an hour. Well, I mean, it is a car going 45 miles per hour on average 
for three hours, that's equivalent to a car always going, like this is the point of what averages are. They're the one number, the one lie that's equidistant from all truths. I mean, that's what an average is. The one lie that's equidistant from all truths. So it's the one number you, when things are changing all the time, it's the one number you can get away with saying, it's as though the numbers didn't change, right? That's what your rate point average is, right? So we say this car is equivalent to a car going 45 miles per hour on for the whole three hours. So 45 times three is 135, which is the answer. I'm saying that equation, one F AT squared, what it's doing is just what I described in English. It's taking A times T, that gives you the final velocity. Then it's taking one half of that to give you the average, like because it's adding that to zero and dividing by two. So it's doing A times T, taking one half of that, giving you the average, and then multiplying it by t again, average velocity times time is displacement. That's why it's one half a t squared, right? That's what the equation is doing. So the answer is one, and please write this down because I just ran out of room on the sheet and we only have four minutes so I have to do the other equation really fast. So you get 135 miles is the answer to this. If you get that, if you get why it's not 90, why it is 135, you really get something important about the distinction between acceleration and velocity or you get something important about how acceleration is related to velocity, or you get something important about how to use all four of our equations so far. Is there, now, hopefully you do, because I just have to go on, I know we only have four minutes, three minutes, oh my God, wait, is that right? Yeah, three minutes. There's one more equation to give you, I'm gonna have to give it to you very fast, but you could slow down the video, or you could watch the other video too if you want, or you could see in the notes. The last equation I'm gonna give you is the equation that you use if ever you have an example, if ever you're asked a question, where you're not given any information about the time and also you're not solving for the time. Any question that doesn't relate to time at all, such as this is like this, okay? So it says here, let's continue to assume A equals A naught. What if we do not know the time, but we also aren't solving for time? For example, the example right here, now again, I'm doing this a little bit fast, but of course I'll give you the notes and it's not hard. I'm just, I'm making it very, now that you get the point of these equations, I'm saying, what if, for example, we have a car accelerate at a constant rate of acceleration of five meters per second squared, right? But what if it accelerates from an initial velocity of 10, let's say, because it doesn't always have to be zero, from 10 to 100, right? And if I ask, how far does it get? That is a, that is a totally reasonable physics question. And it can be totally gotten with all the information you already have. We don't need new information to solve that. What you could do there is use the, one of your equations. You could use the definition of acceleration. You could find out the amount of time that it must have been traveling, okay? And in fact, I'll tell you, if you really think about it, it's gotta be 18 seconds. You could figure out the amount of time because it's going from 10 to 100, gaining always a rate of five every second. So it's gotta gain a total of 90 meters per second of velocity, but it's doing it five per second. So 90 divided by five is 18, whatever. You could do that. Then you could say, aha, Aha, uh -huh, this thing on average is traveling 55 meters per second. Where did I get that? I averaged 10 and 100 to add them together and divide by two. You could say, aha, uh -huh, this thing is equivalent to something going 55 meters per second for 18 seconds. Multiply those two and get the answer. You could do that. And it's totally right, right? But that would, in fact, involve you pretty much doing all the four equations or three of them, solving for the time and then plugging in the time. To get. But if you want to do it all in one fell swoop, you can, as long as you understand what you're doing, what you can do, and I know I'm saying this very quickly, again, I'll give you the notes, it's not her, but instead of going through that and getting that answer, once and for all time, we can go through that algebraically, kind of like we did to get the other equation. We can, in other words, say, okay, displacement equals average velocity times time, that's what I have right here, right? Then I can realize, aha, as long as acceleration is a constant, then average velocity is the average of velocity. So I could say displacement equals it. And again, if I'm going a little faster, remember, I'm going to put you the notes in the classroom and so forth. So maybe just for right now, instead of scrambling to write it, just like sort of pay attention for a second. I'm saying displacement equals average velocity times time. Average velocity is average velocity, right? Right here, right? But then time, like, I'm using one of the equations. I'm solving for time the way I just did in my head a second ago. I'm saying, how can we get time? Well, average rate of acceleration is change in velocity per time. So I can rearrange that. I can re multiply both sides by T, divide both sides by A, and I have an expression for time. Time equals change in velocity over A. You could do it a little more slowly if you want to see what I'm doing. 
But then I can plug that in for T. This is just a way, if I was never given T and I'm not solving for T, this is just a way of once and for all, instead of solving for T and then plugging it in, I'm just doing that algebraically. So I never even have to worry about the T. So I plug in this expression for T here. So I have X minus X naught, like displacement equals average velocity times time. That's what this says. I'm gonna flip the page. I know I'm going a little bit fast. So that's what it says on the top. Av displacement equals average velocity times time. That's all it says. But then if I FOIL out, so I just multiply, I'm multiplying two fractions. So I multiply the numerator and multiply the denominator, FOIL out the numerator and these middle terms cancel out. It's the difference between two perfect squares. And so the final thing, and this is where I'm stopping. I know it's 420. I'm putting down the cannoli. I'm taking the gun or the other way around. The other way around. I'm saying the final equation is X minus X naught equals V squared minus V naught squared over 2A. That's our last equation for kinematics. Don't memorize it or anything. I'm just, what's the point of it? It's just what you use when you don't have the time and you don't need the time. You never need this equation. It's just a shortcut for that situation that we just got by smashing together the other equations together. That's it. And if we applied it to this circumstance of these numbers that I just said, we would get an answer of 990 meters. Uh, sorry to go over by a minute. That's all I've got today. I will catch up on your homeworks. I apologize uh, with total respect and affection and esteem to Athea and everybody on that one um, and in general. So I'm done. I'll hang out for questions if there are any, but. Thank you so much. Yes, have a good tattoo. I mean, have a good rest of, don't tell him I didn't say. Have this. a good day, Professor. Good day. Thank you. Hi, Professor. Is there any way I could talk to you? Yeah, yeah. Before we leave. Um, so I'm missing a few assignments. I was just wondering if it 